Is this thing on? Hey, it's uh, Show and Drive. Today, uh, for Show and Drive, we're going to go over some of the changes I made to the Axial Blazer. Uh, I decided to take this entire trip outside because, uh, I don't know, it's the end of summer. It's uh, pretty nice out, actually. Uh, I'm down here at the lake. We've got some pretty interesting terrain just down here that we get to go and drive on, so it kind of seemed like a good idea just to do the whole thing right outside here. And uh, So, first things first, I really like the truck just the way it is. Uh, some people have been putting like a roof, the roof on it for the Axial uh, Lexan body kit that they sell. Some people like uh, Andy Lowry I know took off the cage work and then he did a, an authentic blazer paint job on the outside of the Lexan and that looks amazing too. Um, I did a couple of little tricks with it that I want to show you. Uh, one of the things that I didn't like about the truck from the factory was the bumper overhang. There was, the bumper for some reason was out considerably farther than it should have been, I think. Uh, but I think they were kind of expecting you might put a winch in it. I'm not. And so I pulled the bumpers right in. You can see here on the inside that um, the way that the holes are set up, they've got these two pins here that's a typical sort of uh, bumper attachment here. And I've got it on the most inside hole now. The bumper's pushed as far in as it can go and it was as far out as it can go before that. So that's a big, like, no-no. To me, that's, no. The bumper should have been in all the way. I don't know why they did that. Um, in the rear, I pretty much did the same thing in the rear. Uh, one of the things that I did in the back is I just sort of slightly trimmed off the cab corner here. There's a little tiny trim here. There's a little tiny trim right here. Just to kind of notch that out a little bit. And that let me put the bumper back quite a bit farther. It was sticking right out. I'm pretty sure I moved it like two holes, I think. So I have it on the most inside hole that you can use again, um, plus one. So the bumper is one hole out from its most inward position. And I'm pretty sure it used to be like here. So I moved it in quite a bit and that gives me a much better departure angle on the back of the truck. Uh, one of the other changes I made right away on the truck was I put the RC four-wheel drive uh, 1.9 Blazer wheel on it. I did paint these flat white to give them a bit of a different look, kind of a more wagon wheel style of look. Uh, but these are pretty amazing with the trim ring. And the rim is so friggin' wide, um, I had to find a tire that was actually wide enough because I was having trouble getting a tire with a wide enough foam. I put the regular size 1.9 tires on it and then the foam, the tire stuck out wider and so there was actually a gap in the side of the foam because the foam wasn't even big enough to make this wide rim work properly. So uh, I finally found these tires to go on it. I really like the size as well. These are, these are apparently a 4.0 size tire. Um, they're one and a half, 1.6 wide. They're very wide tires, but uh, they fit the rim perfectly. And they're of course 1.9, so with the trim ring they look amazing. This is from RC four wheel drive as well. It's a Dick Sapec Extreme Country tire. Really nice tread on it. We'll see how they work on the rocks and the dirt today. Um, I made a couple other little changes which I want to show you. Um, first of all, you know, these are Lexan and the bodies usually rattle around on them really bad. And so one of the things I wanted to do right away was fix the body rattle. Um, I'll pull these off here, it's simple clip attachment, the typical axial body way. And the simple trick to cure the body rattle is just to add some little tiny one-sided sticky foam pads on it. That was all it needed. Up in the front here I did the same. I just cut some little squares, poked a hole through it with a hole punch for paper. And then uh, there you go. They just stick right on the body over the body hole in the rear as well. And that takes care of the rattle. So now I don't have to worry about the thing going down the trail and it's all clankety clank, you know, I hate that, it drives me crazy. And you can see before I did that, it's been, it has been rubbing quite a bit. Um, there's all this blue paint all over it here. 
where the Lexan has been rubbing on the bumper. So, I mean, that's ridiculous. The only other change I made to the truck so far that I think uh, was kind of necessary also for looks pretty much only is um, I moved the front shock down. So see if I can get this close up here in the camera. What I did here is I moved the front shock from the high mount above the link down to the actual link screw. So I put a longer link screw in it, very simple procedure and I moved the shock to just outside of the link. And the reason I did that is because it always looked to me like the truck was sitting low in the back and high in the front. And so by simply by dropping the front suspension, that extra five millimeters, I was able to level out this, the, uh, the look of the truck. And the other reason is because um, you can't, the body sits on the bumpers on this truck. It's actually sitting right on the bumpers. And so you can't lower the body any farther without doing a bunch of extensive trimming and stuff. So I decided against all the trimming and whatnot and just went for the little tiny change on the front shock. And uh, I'm really happy with how that looks. It doesn't affect the uh, suspension or the ride height or anything in general. So it looks better. I like it. Very simple changes. Uh, I'm going to use a Helios 1500 three cell battery in the truck today and we're going to take it out on the trail and uh, see what we can do. Because I have such a small battery in here, I actually added some little rubber um, kind of a, I don't know, liner. Two little pieces of rubber there in the tray. Because the battery is so small, uh, what has, ends up happening with a battery that's this size is that it kind of starts to rattle around in there. So strap that on just like that with a little bit of foam in there in the tray at the bottom it keeps the battery from sliding forward and backward so very easy to do i have changed the receiver to use my uh, gt3c fly sky radios uh, i only did that out of necessity because i wanted the other radio for a different project so i stole it the tactic three channel and now I'm using a, a FlySky receiver. That doesn't really change anything, really. The rest of this is all completely stock. I've never opened the transmission. It's the original uh, light kit ESC that comes with it, the original dirt. All the scratches are from Rob and Dana, I promise. And uh, let's get this thing out on the trail and see what it does. One of the main reasons for changing out the receiver and going to the FlySky radio is because of this Expo. So you can see how incredibly smooth the throttle is at the low speed, even with the factory electronics. And part of the reason for that is because I've set up a dual rate on the throttle channel at 60%. So basically what that means is I've got 60% of my throttle is actually happening at the top of the throttle curve and um, at the very very end most of the throttle happens so at the bottom of the throttle I've got huge amounts of precision and control very little of the throttle movement actually happens at the bottom and that helps a lot with the rocks and I'm running a three cell battery too, so the top end wheel speed is there for sure. But because I've got the dual rate set up, like I can get a hold of this rock here and then just literally creep right over it. And I'm pulling my trigger like a quarter of the way and the truck is barely moving. Like it's just fantastic, you know. I'll get up here to this other rock and you can see what I mean. You just put a wheel on there, just like that. And you can just barely go, just barely. You don't have to wrap the throttle or anything. It's great. 
There's a little bit of a clearing here coming up. See if I can't gas it here. You know, if you want to go fast, there's lots there. The cool part about using this all natural terrain here is that it, the river just leaves you these presents all over the place, like this here rock. You know, it's like a side hill, jagged kind of. Oh, I'm on the diff now. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a challenge that you don't you don't plan it. Nobody has to build the course. You know what I mean? And that's just great. I am liking how these tires perform. We'll have to take it over to the uh, the hill climb. This is pretty much just a loose, about eight foot high, you know, rock, shale, dirt, mud kind of a climb. I have no idea how well this is gonna do, but we'll see. The four wheelers come down here all the time and probably back up, so I'm not sure if that's good for packing the dirt or bad for making it loose. Might be because I've got a big stick stuck in it there, I don't know. Better go check that stick. Should be alright. Trying to get a wheel on the grass there. Maybe I can get some better grip in the thicker dirt. Maybe not. There's like uh, no grip here. Now I've got either a branch or a rock. There we go. I seriously did not think it was going to get up that hill. But we made it. I think that's why I like using those little three cell batteries. When you want some jam, you can hit the gas and get a whole bunch of extra wheel speed. Kind of just for occasions like that, you know what I mean? Definitely a nice driving truck. Even in its all stock form, it's really quite pleasing to drive. The suspension works fantastic on this thing. I did have to uh, refill the shocks on it once in the front uh, for whatever reason they just decided to send all the oil out down the shock shaft so it has been re-oiled but I just used the factory stuff and it should work fine forever well thanks for watching guys just a little bit of show and drive here with this axial blazer really quite happy with this truck uh, I think it looks a little better now than it did before. I'll park it up on the flat of this hill here. You can kind of get a bit of a profile of it. I don't know. I like it a lot. 
I like the body style. I like it with these wheels and the four inch diameter tire seems to suit it quite a bit better than the larger factory tire that came with it. So, could be one of my my uh, few blue vehicles. I don't have very many blue trucks and I really like the way this one turned out. The look and the finish seems to work for me. So, And my door handle's falling off. Cheers guys, thanks for watching.